Hi there, this is Pete with the First Aid Lecture Series team, and today we're going to talk about the molecular section of biochemistry. The first topic is DNA. There's a whole lot of DNA in the cell, and that's all contained in the nucleus. And the cell needs to have a good way of condensing that DNA, and it does this with proteins called histones. Here they are. Now, histones assemble into a core called the nucleosome, and the DNA is wound around this nucleosome. Now, the residues of histones contain many arginine and lysine amino acids, which you can see here. At physiological pH, lysine and arginine carry positive charges, and this allows them to interact with the negatively charged phosphates of the DNA backbone. When the DNA is closely interacting with histones, it is tightly wound around them and cannot be accessed by RNA polymerases, which means that there's no gene transcription. Effectively, the gene is silenced. However, there are enzymes, known as histone acetylases, that transfer acetyl groups to lysine and arginine and neutralize the positive charge. When this happens, the DNA is released from the histone and RNA polymerases have access to the genes and can begin transcription. Now, if there's a histone acetylase, we can guess that there's histone deacetylases, and indeed there are. Histone deacetylases remove acetyl groups from lysine and arginine, restore the positive charge, and allows them to closely bind the DNA. When DNA is tightly bound to histones, it's condensed and it's known as heterochromatin. When it's loosely associated, it's called euchromatin. And you can remember this with the mnemonic, heterochromatin is highly condensed. And euchromatin, you rhyming with true, truly transcribed. Here's a cartoon that depicts what euchromatin and heterochromatin looks like. Here's the euchromatin, and here's the heterochromatin. Now let's talk about the nucleotide bases that actually make up the DNA strands. There are two types, the purines and the pyrimidines. The purines are adenine and guanine, A and G, and the pyrimidines are cytosine, thymidine, and uracil. Now note that uracil is not typically found in the DNA, it's found in the RNA. You can remember the purines and pyrimidines with this mnemonic here. Purines are pure as gold, A standing for adenine, G for guanine. The mnemonic for pyrimidines is cut the pie, C-U-T. Now let's look at the actual chemical structures of the purines and pyrimidines. Here they are. Now note that guanine and adenine have two aromatic rings, whereas cytosine, thymine, and uracil only have one aromatic ring. Now in DNA, adenine interacts with thymine via two hydrogen bonds. Guanine, on the other hand, interacts with cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. So the GC interaction is more stable than the AT interaction, and this makes an important biochemical difference in the DNA. If you have DNA, which is mostly GC base pairs, the two strands of DNA will interact more strongly, and thus their melting temperature is much higher, meaning that you would have to heat up that DNA much more to get the two strands to dissociate from one another. Another feature which increases the melting temperature of DNA is the length of the DNA. The longer the strand, the higher the melting temperature, because there are more bonds between the two strands. Let's talk about some other important features of purines and pyrimidines. One thing to keep in mind is that cytosine can undergo a process called deamination. When this happens, cytosine is converted to uracil, and this is a potential source of mutations in the DNA. This can be repaired, but if it's not, it will result in mutation. Another important fact regarding purines and pyrimidines is that three amino acids are required for their synthesis. These three amino acids are glycine, aspartate, and glutamine, and you can remember this with the mnemonic GAG. Now let's talk about some nomenclature that you should be familiar with. A nucleoside is a base, either A, G, C, U, or T, connected to a ribose sugar, as is the case with RNA, or a deoxyribose sugar, as is the case with DNA. Any addition of phosphate groups turns the nucleoside into a nucleotide. So with the addition of one phosphate group, we call it a nucleotide monophosphate, with two a nucleotide diphosphate, and with three a nucleotide triphosphate. 